This is a special midweek garden update. I'll be showing you some footage of our garden from the last five weeks. I have been working on this video for several weeks and keep adding on to it so hopefully it all makes sense. I have also included some video footage from earlier this spring and at the end are some updates on the trees and other landscape. Gardening is always an adventure and we'll see how it goes. I'm definitely not an expert and we could have major pest issues or who knows what'll come up. So welcome to Red and April Off-Grid. We are building our off-grid homestead here in the Arizona desert. Red and I are living in this RV while we build our house. And over here, so we used one side of the shipping container for one of our garden walls. The rest of the garden is aircrete. So we built a two foot tall aircrete wall and then put a four foot fence on top of that. So here is our Arizona desert garden. So we are in the middle of the monsoon season right now. We've had about nine inches of rain out here. So everything is very green. Lots of wildflowers growing. We have a lot of big mesquite trees on the property, which have really helped with the garden. So I gathered the mesquite soil from under the big trees, and that's what we filled all of our garden beds with. So this is all just native soil, and it's pretty amazing what can grow out here in the desert. Give it some water. I do water every single day, pretty much. I usually water in the morning. I like to come out in the morning and water and pick and do a little bit of weeding. As you can see, the weeds are taking over a bit. We are building our house right now, so the garden hasn't been getting all the attention that it needs. But we're getting a whole lot of food out here, so pretty amazing what you can get with just a small garden. So even this small garden, it's about 28 by 35 or so enclosure, and we've got a whole lot of food off of it. So. I've been putting together some videos the last few weeks, so I'll go ahead and show you all those. And thanks for watching. So it's July 25th. Just thought I'd do a little garden update. We went on a trip. We just got back Saturday. Here's a pile of sunflowers that I finally decided to take out from, from under the bean plants. Finally got those out, so it'll get a lot more sun there in between the bean plants. The squash were looking a little sad before we left, and now some kind of cucumber beetle have really taken over. So since I've got back, I've been spraying everything real heavy with neem oil and dish soap to try to get rid of those. But it was really hot the whole time we were gone, and we didn't get any rain. So that was kind of hard on things. It's going to be much cooler this week and a little wetter. So here's some butternut. I think we have four on here. My daughter picked a couple that weren't quite ripe while we were gone. So I think this plant has about six of them. Then I picked some that were real small before we left and you can eat those just like summer squash. So we enjoyed those, but just want to get a few of these ripened. They're pretty good size. Those beetles just really, they really decimated my strawberry plant. And then just certain leaves they really attacked. So, but the plant is hanging in there and hopefully, hopefully we can at least get this batch to ripen. So here we are in the garden. The rain gauge is showing right at an inch. So nice little rain we had there. Not too much wind and it didn't come down too crazy hard so that's always nice. The cucumber beetles seem to be a little bit more under control but in general everything's doing pretty well. Most of the spaghetti squash have been picked. There's a couple here that aren't ripe. This plant only had two and they're really large. So everything's hanging in there. Definitely some bug damage. The zucchini kind of shrunk and shriveled somewhat, but still starting to get some more zucchini off of there. Tomato plant is looking huge. Starting to get some tomatoes down underneath. Glad we have this cage around it. So one cherry tomato plant can get really huge. And the beans are still doing pretty well. Not as productive as they were at first. So this crookneck squash has the wilt disease, but it's still growing, putting on some new growth on the sides and still tons of little squash. And the okra are starting to grow, definitely some bug damage on them, but I'll keep spraying them with neem oil and hopefully they won't be overtaken. They're doing, doing okay, we're starting to get okra, we should be getting a lot 
doing these okra can be really productive. And looks like we do still have a bunch of the potato beetles. So we have both kinds. We have the striped and the spotted. And looks like some other types of beetles. So I need to get out here and spray again. See if that helps. But they'll just eat. Just completely decimate the leaves. Pretty big guy. Hopefully he's in here eating lots of bugs. And today is August 15th. So here are the butternut and spaghetti squash I've picked. So I have them out here hardening. And I really need to pick these beans. They are just coming on strong. So many beans coming in. So I think it really did help getting rid of the sunflowers that were growing in the center here. They were just huge and blocking a lot of the shade and I'm sure taking some of the nutrients. So this has just really got a second wind. Look at all those beans. The hummingbirds and butterfly and all kinds of insects come in here and help pollinate these. Sometimes things take a little bit of a break and slow down for a bit. But they sure are doing well now. So again, there's my spaghetti and butternut. And so here's the butternut. This is just one plant and it is putting on another batch. It has some good size ones. This plant also had the wilt um, before I left on the trip, but since the temperatures have cooled off, it has recovered. And we've got rid of a lot of the bugs. I'm still seeing some of the cucumber beetles, but not too bad. Quite a bit of grasshopper and all kinds of different types of insects, but nothing is taking over at the moment. Definitely getting some of the powdery mildew, especially in these shady areas. They say there's not a lot you can do to control it when it's too shady, but definitely getting another batch of spaghetti squash coming on. But yeah, just a lot of grass coming up and could use some trimming in here. And these are doing really well. Very pretty. The ants have really got a hold of these and the grasshoppers. So these are my potatoes. I had one buried under the spaghetti squash over here. That's the one I already dug up and they were actually really good. So I'll be digging these up pretty soon. So this cantaloupe was really slow to get going. We got the one cantaloupe right after we got back from the trip and now it's put on a whole bunch and is just really spreading all through here. It makes it hard to get around. And then here's the tomato plant. I picked at least, I mean, I'm thinking maybe a hundred hornworms off of it. There were so many. Been seeing a lot of the hummingbird moths, so figured, figured we would be getting some hornworms. And sure enough, I think we finally got them all off. But this thing is just really spreading out and taking over. You have to squeeze past to get around it. And it's really slowing down, but still getting a little bit of squash. And then this was a volunteer spaghetti squash that came up. So we had three, three big ones on that. But it wasn't planted in the mesquite topsoil, so it only had three on it. So these look like they're about ripe. We're getting a whole lot of okra, trying to eat it every night. A lot of times I'll cut them in half and bake them. And then salt them. Well, they're really good fried or even raw in salad. I'm really enjoying all this okra and it's really just starting to get going. And here's the cucumber. I was surprised it, it did recover after all the bug attack. Lots of cucumbers coming on. The bugs were actually eating the skin off of them. So nice. Nice we don't have so many of those bugs. You can still see a lot of the damaged leaves. I never remove those. But it's making a recovery and got a second wind of lots of cucumbers. And then over here is the zucchini. It was just such a thick plant. And then with all the rain, it really got the powdery mildew going on. And it was just so thick. So I did a whole bunch of trimming. So we'll see if it recovers at all. 
or that may, might be about it for it. But we've got a lot of zucchini off of it, so happy with how it did. Glad we never got squash bugs, because those can just really take over the whole garden. When plants get stressed, it just makes them more likely to get disease. So, so this mesquite topsoil has been doing very well. Hopefully next year we can get a bunch more mulch in here. I'm hoping to scrape it up from the driveway since that's all had some time to break down and age. So it is August 18th. Here is what I picked today in the garden. The beans are going nuts. So starting to get a lot of those. Just a little bit of cucumber, starting to get a few cantaloupe. These are pretty small ones. And most of these spaghetti squash are kind of small. But this mesquite topsoil is good stuff, y'all. So the screen bean trellis here is eight feet tall and the beans went all the way to the top and are just mounding up at the top. So look at this view here of our green bean A-frame. So many beans in there. I just picked them yesterday. With normal green beans, they're really good if you pick them young, but we found with these, it's better to pick them once they get a little more ripe. So I've been trying to let them ripen a little bit longer but there are just so many beans on here. And then here is our cherry tomato plant. This is one plant, it's a four by four enclosure and this plant is just huge. Lots of tomatoes on there, very difficult to pick. So this whole garden has been very productive and did very well. We're glad we took a little time off after we got our house dried in and we finished this garden wall and got the garden planted, it's just a nice size, not too overwhelming, but still enough to, I've been freezing stuff. And then we've been eating as much as we can possibly stand. So the zucchini is about done. It got stressed when we left on vacation and then just hasn't quite recovered. So it is now August 27th. We just picked a whole bunch of beans yesterday, a big box. And there's a whole bunch more in there. I need to pick them again today. We finally took out the zucchini. It was just, it was covered in aphids and cucumber beetles and all kinds of stuff on it. So good to get that out of here. And we just bagged it up in trash cans. And this tomato plant is humongous. This ladder is six foot tall for reference. So brought that in here to help pick things. I still haven't picked the tomatoes. It's been about a week. So I know there's a whole bunch in there. And here's the cucumber, still showing some bug damage, but I just picked all of these today. Surprised it's still producing. So there's seven cucumbers I just picked. The okra have made it up to six feet tall now and still growing, so those are doing very well. Here is the yellow zucchini. I really have liked these. The plants aren't so overwhelming, so they're a little easier to pick. And it does show a lot of powdery mildew, so I just sprayed it down again. The cantaloupe looks like it's about done. It is putting on a little new growth, and there are a few more on there that we need to pick. We've got about six or seven. The zinnias are doing great. I need to put some kind of surround on the pepper plant. It's falling over. And I think these spaghetti squash are just done. They put on two batches. I don't think the bugs have been the downfall of it. I think it's just done. It's been four months since all this was planted. Lots of weeds I need to pull, but we're working on our earth floors, so haven't had a whole lot of time to mess with things. The butternut squash is still trying to put out new fruit and several that we need to pick on there. And we haven't had any hail events or strong winds this summer, so that's been great. But always something that could happen at any time, so. This garden was planted in all native soil. We used some topsoil from under the mesquite trees, some sand and silt from our water catchment pond. And I haven't used any pesticides. I have used some neem oil and dish soap to control aphids and powdery mildew. And also some of the vine-eating insects. And then I've also used some diatomaceous earth on the ground to help with ants and that has seemed to have been quite effective with the sugar ants. We did have a nest of leaf cutter ants under the squash and I haven't wanted to use anything too toxic since it's right under the squash plant and directly in the garden area. But I'm not seeing those so I think we may have finally got them. I just mixed some borax with sugar and water 
and put it in this parmesan thing so that it's open so bugs can get in there but the lizards i don't know if it would bother them anyway but so very encouraging just really didn't expect everything to do so well this year as i was editing this video i decided i just couldn't stand how messy everything looked so i went ahead and pulled up all of the spaghetti squash plants the butternut is still alive and still has some that are ripening and so over here is a bag of plants and then all the spaghetti squash that i picked and i used my trimmer in there i love this electric trimmer i've had it for probably seven years it works great battery powered not so heavy and Here's the rest of the spaghetti squash, a butternut I accidentally picked, and some peppers. So I just thought I'd show you a little tour of the garden currently. I planted most of this stuff on April 23rd, so it's been about a week and a half, and I'll show you around. Okay, so I have green beans and radishes and some greens in this bed. So I planted the green beans along the side, and I plan to put some twine or something to go up to the top once they start growing. I put this chicken wire over them to see if that would be enough to keep the birds from eating all the plants. And so far it seems to be working. I wasn't sure if it was the lizards or the birds that are more of a problem. So these are doing okay so far. A lot of them are coming up. I've spaced them at about a foot or so. I'll thin them out once they get grown a little bit. But they're doing very well. I don't see any of the greens coming up. We have a few radishes coming up. And then have some along the other side also. And then this will be my squash. So I put some flowers around. Tried a few different kinds to see how they do. See if the birds pick them off. And so far these are doing pretty well. So this is going to be butternut and spaghetti squash. Here's a pear tomato plant. So I planted this about a week and a half ago. It's definitely growing. I have some air crete around it just for kind of a wind block and also to give it a little more heat at night. We did get down to 29 degrees the other night, so but everything out here was fine. Some of the petals on the flowers showed a little signs of frost, but otherwise I think everything is low enough to the ground that it did okay. So right here I'm going to do cucumber. So this is a different variety I planted here and I have some seeds over there that haven't come up yet and I'm going to put some fencing across the top for the cucumber to climb on and over here is the okra I just planted this the other day I've had the seeds soaking for a while because okra takes two to three weeks before it comes up and last year I had a lot of trouble keeping it alive the birds kept picking it off and I'm going to try to put some little cages around them that just got them in the ground and somewhat protected for now and this is a zucchini it's grown quite a bit since I got it I have air crate around it to kind of insulate it and over here is interesting so this is where I had the big tomato plant last year and I wanted to put squash here this year so as you can see the bed is completely bare but under this thing is just full of tomato plants that have been sprouting up. So I took the cover off so we could see better what was going on in here. And there's my two crookneck squash and a whole bunch of baby tomato plants. So that's kind of my experience out here is that as long as you protect them while they're, they're small seedlings from the birds, um, you just got to give them a little time to get a little bit bigger than the birds seem to leave them alone. And as long as the rabbits and Bigger animals can't get in here. I think the garden will do very well. I don't have to do any weeding because the birds take care of everything. I'm definitely not going to pull any of the weeds at this point or the grass. It at least gives the birds something to eat. So here's another covered container that has cantaloupe in it. Cantaloupe just came up a few days ago. So here is some volunteer squash that came up. I had the roll of fencing setting here and the plants had been picked on but had somehow survived because the fencing had protected it so pretty much anything that is not covered is going to be eaten. Over there is my compost bin. I just dump all my kitchen scraps in there for now. Love these trellises that Red built. Still need to put some fencing over some of them and again hang some twine. 
I had some potatoes sprouting, so I decided to plant those here. And then I have a little pepper plant right here. This shipping container is a great addition to our garden wall. It makes a nice block. Just kind of helps protect everything. We've planted a tree on each side to eventually give a little more shade to the garden area. I think the main key is to have good soil and to have plenty of mulch. And that's the best thing you can do to keep your plants from getting overheated. This is what we have so far. Gardening is always an adventure and we'll see how it goes. Okay, this is a Mexican bird of paradise. It was just a tiny little twig. When we planted it, I got it from Ace Hardware. I just did not think it was going to survive. It says it needs to be in well-drained soil, so I did plant it in sand and small gravel, but figured it might be too close to the house and not get enough sun, but it looks like it's doing pretty well. It's about three feet tall and starting to bloom. I probably should have moved it away from the house a little more, but it's doing very well. And then over here is the Afghan pine. I found with these leaf cutter ants, we just have to get rid of all the ant hills is the only way to protect them. The plate worked for a bit. They kind of attack and then leave it alone for a while, wait for things to grow back, and then they'll come back again. So I have to keep an eye on it. Here's some of our dirt pile for our earth floors. That's going good. We'll be showing you that soon. And here is my elderberry. It's doing okay. I, I hear these like a lot of water, and at times I think it's not getting quite enough water. But it has grown a lot, and overall is doing pretty decent. This is a Mexican elderberry. There's the Afghan pine. I have some yarrow, some salvia, and some fig and pomegranate on the end of the house. We do have a few prickly pear on the property, but hardly any. They get all shriveled up during the winter, get frozen. We have a few small ones that are barely surviving. And sadly, we can't eat any of the mesquite beans. They ripen too late in our area. They don't ripen till mid-monsoon, and then there's a risk of fungal. There's a risk of fungus growing on them, so they're really not edible. So that's unfortunate. I was really hoping to make some mesquite flower this year. What's going on out front here? I let some of these wildflowers grow to help hold down the soil. Here's the one thing I planted is the fire thorn. So it's starting to look pretty good and the rest of these are just wildflowers. I'm not sure what this is. It came up and I thought it looked interesting so I've been leaving it and it looks like it's about to bloom. I haven't seen any others of those on the property so. And then on the other side we have this gourd that I planted last year and so it's just growing everywhere. It's climbed all the way to the top. It's coming back down. And I think on the other side of the container, it's all the way to the edge, all the way to the end of the shipping container. So pretty impressive how much this thing has grown. If we had more stuff for it to climb on, we could probably get it to cover the whole thing. So I planted this to have some shade at the end of the shipping container, which our solar room is on this side. And then our solar panels are on top. And I've mowed several times, but I'm trying to leave some of these wildflowers just to give the water somewhere to go. The roots kind of help hold the soil down. So thanks for watching and join us again next time for our off-grid home build.